One of these men is the only atomic cowboy in the world. What is your name, please? My name is Kenneth Case. What is your name, please? My name is Kenneth Case. What is your name, please? My name is Kenneth Case. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Kenneth Case and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Camel Cigarettes. Now may I introduce our panel. First, Miss Polly Bergen, then Mr. Don Amici, next, Miss Kitty Carlisle, and finally, Mr. Tom Poston. <laughs> now, panel, will you please follow along with me with your copies of this first affidavit as I read it. I, Deputy Sheriff Kenneth Case, am a full-time cowboy for the Atomic Energy Commission. On the government's 600-square-mile atomic test range in Nevada, I tend a herd of 50 Hereford cattle, which is kept on the proving ground to check the effects of fallout and atomic radiation. The area has been the site of 93 atomic explosions since 1951. I am the world's only atomic cowboy. Signed, Kenneth Case. Start out this evening panel with three stalwart gentlemen, all claiming to be Kenneth Case, as you heard, atomic cowboy. And let's begin this first round of questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, bud. Fellers, uh, cowboy number three, do you have anything to do with fallout yourself? Did you ever fall out of the saddle? No. Nah. <laughs> it's happened. It's happened, eh? Uh, number three, could you tell me, uh, what is the boss called of a, of a herd of horses? The fellow that's in charge of the herd of horses. What's Wrangler. He and uh, what is what he is in charge of called? Remunda. Thank you. Number uh, one, could you tell me what is a, a pigging string? A pigging string is used to tie the feet of a critter after it's roped. Critter. Number three, would you repeat your, your answer to what uh, uh, the herd of horses is called? Remunda. Thank you. Number... Uh, number Remunda, two. Remunda, Tuesday, or Wednesday, or Thursday, you know, yeah. <laughs> Ever Remunda? <laughs> Polly Bergen, please. Uh, number one, uh, there is a name for the locality of where the, uh, the uh, blast, uh, many of the blasts took place. Could you give me the name of that place? Oh, it's known as the NPS, that a test site. Uh, number two, is there like a, a, a name? Well, that's one name, uh, Yucca Flats. Uh, number flat. three, have you ever been in Las Vegas? Some, not very much. How far is Las Vegas from Yucca Flats? About 60, 70 miles. Number one, uh, can the uh, uh, blast be felt in Las Vegas? Sometimes. Uh, number two, what is the name of the road, the area leading out of Las Vegas where most of your large hotels are? Well, they call that the Strip. Don, uh, number three, what is the origin of the, uh, of the cowboy pony? The origin? Yes. What, what strains has he come from? Well, they were taken from horses the Spaniards brought over years ago, and they run wild, and the cowboys more just picked them up, broke them, a lot of paints. Now they use a lot of quarter horses. Uh, number, uh, number one, uh, do you ever use quarter horses? Yes. Number two, would you agree with that? Yes, that's, that's all I use. Uh, number one, what are the requirements of a, uh, of a real good roping pony? Uh, fast, be able to stop fast and hold. Number two, could you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, he's got to be a pretty strong horse, and he's got to hold. Number, number three, could you go any further? Got to have well, plenty of rope, too. They're Kitty? very agile and yet strongly muscled, heavily muscled, so they can handle cattle. Number two, if I were standing in Las Vegas and said that I saw the mushroom of an atomic bomb rise, would I be lying? Well, I don't live in Las, in Las Vegas. I don't think you would be, though. You don't think I could see it? 
I think you could see it. You think I could see it? Number three, I'm not really interested in any of that. All I want to know is, what did you find in those cows? Anything? No, they show no signs of any bad effects. None at all. Number one, what is strontium-90? Well, it comes from fallout. Have you found any in the cows? No. None at all? Number two, what kind of faces do Herefords have? They're white faces. All white? Yes. I guess that's it. Time to vote for the first time tonight, panel. And as usual, without consultation, will you kindly mark your ballot? Voting for number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Everybody voted? Holly? For whom did you vote? I voted for number three. I don't know why I voted for number three. <laughs> if I knew, I would be positive that it's number three, which I'm not. And then you'd be scared. And then I'd be scared. <laughs> Don, I also voted for uh, number three. I, I must say they all answered uh, all questions well. They're all well-schooled, I must say, and they lie very, very well. But yeah. that's, that's any credit to the, uh, to the ones who are not the uh, real one, I don't know. I don't Kitty? know cows know what did you vote? <laughs> I voted for number three. I voted for number three for a very, very personal reason. I didn't ask the other two this question, but he said the cows show no noticeable signs of fallout. And I voted for number three. I hope he's right. <laughs> and finally, well, Tom, your vote. Looky there. I've done... <laughs> I, voted for, I tell you, uh, I, I may have been under a misapprehension all this time, but in my years of experience riding the ranges, I thought... It's all right, I believe you, Tom. Go Thank ahead. You. Did you say rails or range? <laughs> Either one at all. I, I understood that uh, a group of horses is called a remuda. I wonder. We'll see in a minute, I guess. Remuda, Rechuda, Rewensi. Rewedia, Wethardia. Isn't that what you uh, said? Well, here we have it now with our votes in, our minds made up in a way, let's see. Our own particular moment of truth comes right now as we find out which of these three gentlemen is the real so-called atomic cowboy. So will the real Kenneth Case please stand up? Thank you very much, sir. He certainly was, I would say, Tom, the, the most in the old tradition of the yup, nope. He was the least loquacious. Uh, yep. That might have had something <laughs> in coloring your vote, and it was a good one. I thought the critter was uh, a number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? Yes, my name is Bryce Cecil, and I work for the American Petroleum Institute here in New York City. Thank you, sir. And finally, sir, you who garnered the greatest number of votes and fooled the panel that far, at least, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Kenneth Yearns, and I come from New York, and I do roadside chemical brush control. <laughs> well, we check up our score and see that it wasn't bad for you fellas. There were three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $750 from Camel Cigarettes, and of course, a carton of camels for each of you on the way out. Thanks for visiting us. I hope you enjoyed it. We did. Good night, and good luck to you. I've just been informed that our late number three gentleman right here, who garnered most of the votes, was born and raised in New York City and has never been in the West in his life. <laughs> Which is an interesting... so much about those horses and everything. Hey, smart, that's all. He's just sure. smart. And now let's meet some more smart people in our next team of challenges. Water horse. Spanish. What is your name, please? My name is Joan Brandon. What is your name, please? My name is Joan Brandon. What is your name, please? My name is Joan Brandon. Once again, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this next affidavit? I, Joan Brandon, a former orchestra leader, am a professional hypnotist. Both my father and my grandfather were hypnotists. I have traveled throughout the world with my act, which includes mass hypnosis. I also perform self-hypnosis. I have assisted medical doctors in helping hundreds of people with problems of diet, nail-biting, insomnia, and hiccups. 
Signed, Joan Brandon. All right, panel, you heard these three ladies all claiming to be Joan Brandon, hypnotists. Let's begin this round of questioning with Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, Bud. Uh, number one, who is Sheffield? Orchestra leader. Number two, what was Sheffield famous for? Piano, the twinkling tunes. Uh, number three, what was Sheffield famous for? Well, he was famous with his orchestra. Uh, yes, but what else? What in particular? Uh, uh, number two, do you know? Uh, didn't he have something called champagne music? Bubbling music? Uh, or is that another one? <laughs> Thank you. Number one, um, who was your agent? Who is my agent? Yes, who was your agent when you, or is, I guess you... Kenneth might Later. Feel, I beg your pardon? Kenneth Later. Uh, number two, who's your agent? Steve Marks. Uh, number three, Ken... Mm, Donna Michi. Donna Michi. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Uh, number three, where does the release generally come on a song? How many bars in? The release... Um... The release usually comes just before the bridge. Would you, uh, uh, how far in would you say comes number two, please? I wouldn't be able to say. I beg your pardon? I think I really that should be used know. in singing. Uh, number, uh, number one, would you beat out three-quarter time for me? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, number two, could you hum me a sample of a difference between major and minor? No, I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> number three? If I heard the minor, I could do the major. <laughs> I probably could. <laughs> All right, Somebody Kitty, please. <laughs> Number three, I know that this, this program fascinates me. I want to know about fallout. I want to know about what you know about. I want to know how to lose five pounds. <laughs> Hypnotism. How? Be hypnotized and put on a diet. Which you can you, when, you, when you hypnotize yourself, Number three, can you, can you get yourself out of it? Oh, yes. How? Predetermine the Predetermined. time of awakening or else go to sleep and wake up as you ordinarily uh -huh. would. Do you, uh, do you read music, number three? A little. How many shops in the key of C shop? I don't know. Number two? <laughs> one. One shop in the key of C shop? Number one? In the key of C shop, yeah. Two shops. I don't think any of these ladies don't have music. Don Foster. You know, uh, listen. Uh, I'm kind of interested. I'll ask this first question of Don. Could you sing the difference between a major and a minor for us? <laughs> sure, I can. Come on. The release of, uh, of the Cole Porter song from... Uh, 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 no, 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 from, uh, from Can Can. Can -Can. Uh, I love Paris. Ah, da, 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 da. Then the, the one goes to the, the minor. I love Paris every moment. Which is major? The major is the beginning. The minor is the, is the release. That's beautiful. You're the right girl. It's a matter of... <laughs> I don't always, know about the girl, always, but I'm right. <laughs> always leave them laughing. You can use up your time with well, that you know. <laughs> So, it's time to vote, panel, without consultation. Uh, uh, will you kindly mark your ballot, major or minor, and select number one, number two, or number three? <laughs> Everybody mark? All set. Okay, Polly? I don't know. I voted for number one. Uh, number two and number three didn't know that uh, Chef Fields was f famous for his bubbles, blowing bubbles in a champagne glass. Uh, number two, after I went back to her, uh, uh, finally remembered, um, he was the originator. Lawrence Welk came many years later. Uh, also, uh, number two and three didn't answer several other questions satisfactory to me. Neither did number one. What are you going to do? It's not gone, so there you are. Don, I voted for uh, number one. I'm uh, sorry, I'm not any more familiar with music than I am, but she seemed to know the most about uh, all the things, and I didn't ask any questions on hypnotism, mainly because I don't know anything about it. Okay, Kitty? I voted for number one. Not one of them can read music. Not one of them gave me the right answer, the key of, uh, about this uh, C-sharp key. However, uh, number one did beat out the time fairly correctly, and... Uh, uh, number two did know about the bridge. Number three knew about the bridge and about hypnotism a great deal. I don't think it's any of them. And Tom, you got to sing your vote. Tom, <laughs> Kitty, will you shake Tom, please? <laughs> <laughs> I just lost five pounds. <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> May I hit I voted for number one. out of you? I voted for number one also. Well, I didn't ask any questions. Why am I voting? I shouldn't even vote. <laughs> All right, there you have it. Looks like it's unanimous for number one. Was that right? Three for four for number one. No, the light burned out there or something. One light burned out. There are, should be four up there. Four for number one. And let's see how right or wrong we may be in this uh, exhibition of unanimity as we discover which one of these ladies is the real hypnotist. Will the real Joan Brandon please stand up? Thank you very much. I see the girls muttering. They're going to ask something. Polly? Uh, no, I just wanted to clarify for her. Dear, the bridge and the release are the same thing. <laughs> I play the drum. In case you ever go back to orchestra leading, I thought maybe you like plays the drum. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter, I guess. Okay, you may be seated. Thank you very much, Brandon. Mm -hmm. Number one, should tell us your real name and what you really do, please. Uh, my real name is Cyrilla Dorn, and I'm the owner of the Cyrilla Beauty Salon here on 2nd Avenue in New York City. You're a good ass. <laughs> and number two, your real name and what you do, please. My name is Fritzy Max. I'm a housewife and the mother of two grown children. <laughs> Well, it was nice having you all here and having fooled the panel 100% there with four incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $1,000 from Camel Cigarettes plus a carton of Camels on your way out. Thank you for your visit. Good night and good luck to you. <laughs> Up, panel, let's meet our next team of challenges. What is your name, please? My name is Sachin Majumdar. What is your name, please? My name is Sachin Majumdar. What is your name, please? My name is Sachin Majumdar. Panel, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit, please? I, Sachin Majumdar, a graduate of Calcutta University, spent 20 years of my life as a monk in a Hindu monastery. I am a yogi an expert in the ancient art and philosophy of yoga. I now run my own school of yoga in New York City. Signed, Sachin Majumdar. <laughs> Three gentlemen this time, all claiming to be Sachin Majumdar, yoga teacher. And we'll start this round of questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Thank you, bud. Number one, what is a guru? Teacher. Number two, what is a gut? Gut? Spelled G-H-A-T. It's a stair of flight or a, by the side of a river. Uh, and a burning gut? It's, it's a burning if uh, there is some burning around. It's not necessary to be burning. Uh -huh. It's only a flight of steps by the side of a river. Number three, what color is the uh, robe that a Buddhist uh, monk wears? Uh, the Indian word for that is Bhagwan. And what color is it? It's the light orange color. Light orange. Mm. Uh, number one, uh, can you induce a state of catalepsy and how long could you, mm. be, could you stay in it? Uh, that is meditation, not catalepsy in yoga. We don't uh -huh. call it catalepsy. You don't prefer, you do. Uh, no. Polly? I'm oh, sorry, thank Tom. You. Excuse thank me, I thought you were still about It's okay. Tom. It's okay, Agnes. I'm here. <laughs> Ready when you get me. Don't call me early. <laughs> Thank you, bud. Uh, let's see. What's the difference between a uh, spinning mirror and the reverse spiral in hypnotism? I'm sorry, I didn't get to ask any of these questions the last time, and I'm going to get them all questions. I will ask, number one, what is the lotus position, please? Well, in that position, you sit cross-legged and keeping the right foot on the left thigh and the left foot on the right thigh. What's the hay fever position? <laughs> hay fever, I don't know. There's no... Do you, I'm serious. Do you have a, 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 an exercise that would assist in the, uh, in the treatment of hay fever? Yes, I think so. Thank you. Number two, what is the principle involved in the feat of being buried alive? Please. I don't know. Uh, number three, can you tell me what a fakir means? Fakir really is a Persian word. A pardon, pardon me? A Persian word, coming to the Indian vocabulary from Persia during the Muslim rule. Thank you. 
Uh, Polly? A Persian bull, did he word. say? Word. A Persian word. word. A Persian word. I thought we were back with cattle, I didn't. <laughs> uh, I know about a yogi like number three knew about releases in the last section, but um, number one, uh, is, uh, can you teach a person to control their breathing whereby they can like stay underwater or stay under something for an extended length of time without? Yes, I think so. Number two, do they, are they breathing at that time or are they literally holding their breath? I don't know, because I never tried it. <laughs> <laughs> Don Amici, Number please. three, how many years of theology did you have? I had six years in college. Number two, would you agree with that, that did you have six years of theology? It, de it depends upon what college one is, but uh, uh, you can have theology of six years, yes. Uh, number one, what is your daily regime? What time do you rise? What do you do? Uh, usually at uh, 5.30 and go to work at 8.30. You, no prayers before work? Yes, there are prayers before. Before work? Oh, yes. Uh, number two, what do you do after 8.30? In the evening or in the morning? Morning. <laughs> I go to work. I'm prepared, prepared to go to work. Prepared to go to work? Yes. Uh, I guess that's it. So assume whatever position you wish, Lotus, hay fever, or otherwise, but mark your ballots, panel. And if you do so, vote for number one, number two, or number three. Everybody set? No, uh, no, no. Tell me when you've marked, okay, Tom? Okay, yeah. Polly, for whom did you vote this time? If my nurse doesn't get back from her vacation, <laughs> I'm gonna go crazy. I voted for number one. I don't have the vaguest idea who it is. I know very little about Yogi. I've, I've done some reading on it, but not enough to really be able to question these men and find out who it is. Uh, it's a guess. Really, truly a guess. Number one looks like a man who would have been a monk, a monk for so many years. I just don't know. Don, your vote. I voted for number two. It's uh, uh, more a process of elimination because I thought I detected incorrect answers in number one and number three. I only thought I did. <laughs> Kitty, which one did you select? I voted for number two. Oh, number three. Uh, on the basis of uh, all of them gave me answers. My questions were certainly simple-minded. But, uh, and I don't know if he's about yoga, really. But I believe it's number three. And Tom? I voted for number two just to break the tie. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have it. One for number one, two for number two, and one for number three. And we find out whether we're right or wrong as we discover which one of these gentlemen is the real yoga teacher. So will the real Sachin Majumdar please stand up? You may be seated, if you will. Uh, I think you can t tell your nurse to go and stay away another week. I'll All give right. her a You're couple doing more fine. <laughs> You're doing fine. Uh, number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Gangadhar Koshe. I am a student at Teachers College, Columbia University, studying for the doctorate in education. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and number three, your real name and what you do? Uh, my name is Saini. Currently, I'm working for the Shorty's Bookstore. Next fall, I'll be teaching economics and Indian culture at the New School for Social Research. Well, this was a scattered vote this time. There were exactly one, two, three incorrect votes, however, at $250 each for a total of $750 from Camel Cigarettes and, as before, a carton of camels for each of you. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being with us. Good night. Good luck to you. That's all the time we have for tonight, panel, except for some rather frightening facts. You realize that every 14 minutes someone dies in a traffic accident, and every 23 seconds, I believe it is, someone is injured. And all of these accidents are preventable, preventable if only we obeyed the traffic laws. So keep that in mind. Good night, panel. Good night, good night, good night Bud Collier saying good night from Camel Cigarettes and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth, the Mark Gibson Bill's up in production. In association with the CBS Television Network.